Hello and welcome to Gun Theory, the show where we learn about guns in a more educated, academic sort of way. We're not the average, uh, oh, guns go bang, bubba, mm-hmm, that's fun. Yeah, that's not us here. So, if you're looking to learn about guns, you might have come to the right place. So today, what we're looking at is the purpose of fully automatic fire in a rifle, like say an M16 or M4. What we're not talking about today is big belt-fed machine guns. Those are a whole different thing that exists for a whole different reason, so that'll be another topic for another video. And we are using, as you probably have seen, Escape from Tarkov as a medium to demonstrate much of these points. Now this video game is hyper-realistic. It is just absolutely shocking how close this comes to approximating reality. And what we're going to be using is an M4 receiver, so not an AR-15 at all. This thing is capable of fully automatic fire. This is an M4A1. Except we're going to build it exactly as a civilian would build an AR-15 in America today. So you'll note that we have what's called an M-lock foregrip on there, or handguard. It's got little slots in it so you can put lasers and lights and grips and whatever the hell else you'd like to bolt onto it. Many people own a handguard exactly like this one. We've got a Magpul angled foregrip on there, which again is very popular for AR-15s. It's, what, like 30 bucks, I think, right now if you go on their website. And then, moving back, we've got Magpul PMAX, standard 30-round PMAX. Because the big 60-round drums, while yes, you could go out and buy one right now for about 100 bucks, they're not realistic. You'll note that our soldiers don't use them, and that's for good reason. Drum magazines are a cool thought for video games and movies, but they absolutely suck ass in real life. They don't make the gun function as it's supposed to, for one. And another huge thing is how do you carry a whole bunch of big, circular, thick, heavy drums in a square pouch on your body? Because you do have to carry the magazines on your person. Well, it's a huge pain in the ass, and even just getting the magazines out of their pouches is really hard to do quickly. So you'll notice that we're using exactly what our soldiers use. Standard 30 round stick magazines, because they fit in pouches a lot easier. And it's way easier to carry a larger quantity of them on your physical person. Because magazines don't just materialize out of thin air when you need to reload. You gotta carry it on you, and it gets really heavy. Alrighty, that's enough on magazines. Moving back on the gun, we've got a standard red dot sight. And for the pistol grip, we've gone with a Magpul standard pistol grip. This thing is incredibly popular and quite cheap, and most AR-15s in this country have something just like it on there, if not this exact one. And for the buttstock, we've got a Magpul MOE buttstock. Again, extremely popular and quite standard. If you don't have a standard stock factory buttstock on your AR-15, you've probably got either this exact one or something just like it. So, this is built just like I would personally build and most people would build their AR-15s in the civilian realm, except we've done it on an M4, a fully automatic receiver. And this is what we're going to bring into the game to see the purpose of fully automatic fire in an assault rifle, because this one is an assault rifle. What makes it an assault rifle is a couple of technical boring things, but the most important one is that it is capable of fully automatic fire. And another thing to note here in our loadout is we're bringing in six spare magazines on our chest room. That's a quite a realistic one. You could fit maybe two or three more if you wanted to be really heavy and weighed down. But most people are going to bring in around six, maybe seven spare magazines with the one that is in the gun when you walk into the fight. Alrighty, so we're in a factory here, a very close quarters situation where it's going to favor fully automatic fire more than the next place we're going to try it out at. And what I'm sure you're seeing in these clips here is that fully automatic fire doesn't seem to work the same way it does in Rambo. Now why is that? What exactly is happening here? And why is that different than Rambo? Well, for starters, when there's a group of enemies, you'll notice that we're not hosing them down in a horizontal spray of fully automatic fire. What we're doing is we are firing a short burst at a single target at a time and then moving on to the next guy to shoot and doing the exact same thing to him and so on until all the enemies are killed. And that's very important. That is very different than what the movies would show you or most other video games even for that matter. So what we're, what we're actually doing here is we are increasing our hit probability on a single target at a time at the extremely huge cost of ammunition. Remember, we've only got six spare magazines. And when we are through with those six magazines, 
we've got a paperweight instead of a rifle, and we're gonna get shot and killed because we can't fight back anymore. And you'll note that that cost of ammunition is extremely high. To kill one or two guys takes either half a mag to a full magazine. That's an entire 30 rounds to kill two guys. And these guys are not wearing armor, by the way. It's not like their armor is absorbing some of the bullets first. No, these are unarmored targets. And that tells us something very important about fully automatic fire. It is not as useful as most people would want it to be. Now, let's look at a slightly longer range engagement here. Let's see what fully automatic fire does for us here. Nothing. We spent an entire 30 round magazine, one sixth of all of our ammunition, wasted into the wall to not even kill one guy. And this range is what I would approximate to be maybe uh, 20 yards, 60 feet or so. And at 60 feet-ish, it was not useful to us in the slightest. However, let's look at semi-automatic fire. At these ranges, it's quite a lot more useful. While we don't kill them as fast as a close range spray of fully automatic fire on one guy, it is quite a lot more useful in that we spend significantly less ammunition and we actually score the kill. Now let's have a look at a slightly longer range, perhaps a hundred feet engagement against three enemies that are all shooting back. And this is in a pretty good approximation of a big shopping mall. And you'll see here that fully automatic fire probably didn't even score us a single hit on target with three enemies in pretty close range of each other, and we still couldn't hit any of them in fully automatic fire. But when we switch to single shots, we are able to drop them quite quickly. So that's a pretty good idea of how useful fully automatic fire is. It's almost useless. That's roughly speaking what we've just learned here, and that's pretty much true. Any standard soldier in the army, their engagements are not typically any closer than about 300 meters. So if you can imagine trying to use fully automatic fire on a target that you can barely see with the naked eye, you're not going to do anything to him except maybe scare him. And while scaring him is probably more useful than nothing, you haven't taken him out of the fight. He's still able to shoot you or your friends. That's not good. What would be better at that range is single fire semi-automatic. And that is exactly how the military uses M4s in about 95 plus percent of situations, on semi-automatic fire. So having looked at this, should you be that fearful of fully automatic weapons, of machine guns? I would argue no. And in fact, I would raise the stakes slightly and I would say if I had to be in a crowded shopping mall when a mass shooter opened fire on us, I would hope that they had a gun in fully automatic, a machine gun, and used it like a dipshit like you'll see we did in some of the clips here in the factory and waste an entire magazine to do exactly nothing and hurt nobody. Because in this situation, they would waste their precious ammunition resource and by having to reload sooner, it is much easier to remove them as a threat or run away as necessary. Machine guns are not something to be more scared of than any other kind of firearm, unless we're talking about miniguns, which are a whole different beast. But I hope you learned something. If you like this sort of content, make sure to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to see more content just like this. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.